A city that is 2,500 years old wakes up. And with it, a 24-year-old American, David McDonald, who's chosen to make this place his home. But there's no resentment of a foreigner living in... No, 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 not at all. I mean, you'll find that the Yemenis are incredibly welcoming and gracious, and I've never had any problems like that. McDonald from Philadelphia speaks Arabic and edits a local English language magazine. He's lived in Sana'a's old city for two years. You would expect to see these kinds of buildings, this kind of history in sort of a museum or sort of a specially preserved area. But it is a living city with hundreds of thousands of people. That's why I sort of, I feel very fortunate to be able to, to live here. Sana'a is the capital of Yemen, founded as a trading post for caravans taking frankincense and myrrh to the west. Isolated from much of its history and surrounded by 30-foot-high walls, the old city of Sana'a has changed little over the centuries. We could be walking down the street a thousand years ago. Yeah. And it's, it's well, yeah, and that's the same. charm. I think that's what attracts myself yeah. and a lot of others here. Yeah. In 1986, the old city was declared a World Heritage Site by the UN to preserve its unique architecture, principally these tower houses, five to nine floors high, found so nowhere else goes. in the Middle East. It's quite a workout, six floors every time you need to go up and down. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit much, but, uh, you know, saves me having to go to the gym. Breakfast is bread and beans. McDonald has adapted easily to Yemeni life, and although he's wary of the threat yeah, from Al-Qaeda in yeah. rural areas, 17 foreigners have been killed here since 2007, he feels safe in the old city. I tell everyone that I'm American when they ask, and I've never had any problems at all. We head for the souk, the marketplace in the center of the old city, where we find a man selling frankincense and myrrh, aromatic resins from trees that have grown here for millennia. 500. 800. Uh -huh. It smells good, but neighboring stall owners shout out that we're being overcharged. You're cheating okay. us, no? Yes, good price. What? <laughs> good price. Could I have you look? <laughs> Overcharge or not, for $2.50, it seemed like a bargain. The streets are crowded and narrow. These streets were designed to be big enough for two loaded camels to pass. With cars, it's a bit of a squeeze. Finally, we get to Yemen's most curious ritual, gat chewing. So this is the gat market. Why, why is it expensive now? He's just finding out the, the colds. He says it's cold weather? Yeah, the cold weather, the gat doesn't grow. Chewing the leaves from the gat tree releases a stimulant that gives a mild sense of euphoria. It's legal in Yemen, not in the US. And everywhere we look, we see men with bulging cheeks. Do you chew every day? Cousin oh, Yomian. Only on Sundays. Yomian. Every day. And if you if you don't chew, do you feel bad? Lomat cousin, Yeah, he feels uncomfortable if he doesn't chew. As the main Friday noontime prayers approach, the streets go quiet. At the mosques, worshippers spill out onto the sidewalks. There are 103 mosques in the old city of Sana'a, and this is the oldest of them all, the Grand Mosque. It was built in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. How old is this wood? Uh, this could be really more than 1,000 years old. More than 1,000 years old? Yes, yes. Kamal Haglan is a Yemeni architect in charge of renovating the mosque. He tells us we're the first Western camera crew to shoot inside the mosque, one of the most sacred sites in Islam. Normally off limits to non-Muslims, he's letting us in to show us the renovations that began in 2006. Oh, wow. First built on the instructions of the founder of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, in 630, the Jami al Kabir, as it's known in Arabic, has been restored many times. This time with foreign help. Buongiorno, everybody. Buongiorno. Five Italians, a Turk, and an American, alongside 57 Yemenis. Four years of painstaking work with at least two more to go. The whole point of this mosque is it's alive. We are not doing restoration of, of a physical building. We are doing restoration of the cultural and religious and the atmosphere of, of, of this building, the spirit of the building, actually. And the spirit of the old city? Yes. 
The renovation work in Old Sana extends beyond the mosque. Many of the old tower houses also need to be rescued, as their foundations have been undermined by water. Before that, we didn't have in Old Sana a sewer system. No sewer system. No, no pavement. No pavement. So uh, the rain uh, water was getting you into know, the foundations. Yeah. Right. Under the UNESCO plan, the government will pay for renovations if the owners don't have the funds themselves, provided all restorations stick to the original style and design. Fortunately, the old skills haven't died here. The old city is still full of masons, blacksmiths and carpenters who use the streets as an extended workshop. Another unique Yemeni tradition, the ornamental Jambia dagger, worn by every self-respecting male. The handles were originally made of rhino horn until that was banned in 1987. Now they use plastic or deer horn, but the original rhino is still around. So this is rhino horn. Now, so how much is this? Kemala, three million. Uh, two million reals. That's about uh, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand uh, dollars just because this is rhino horn. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, this is twenty-five dollars, and that's uh, ten thousand dollars. Wow. As dusk falls and the city shuts down for the night, we stop for tea at an old caravanserai, an inn where merchants used to unload their camels and spend the night. So if uh, there was a caravan coming through, the camels would sort of stay here, and then um, the travelers would spend the night in these rooms. So it's like an inn? Yeah, basically. Cozy? I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was the, uh, the Sheraton of its day. <laughs> they don't trade with camels anymore, but many of the old traditions are still alive in Sana'a, a city where the present still feels very much like the past.